Welcome to the Intermarket Analysis video update. This is being prepared for Monday, March 13th. The idea behind this video is to look at other indexes within the stock market and compare them to the S&P 500, and then also look at other markets outside of the stock market and also compare those to see if we get any useful insights as to what's happening in the market itself. The first thing that we look at is S&P 500 valuation. On a historical basis, we are still overvalued. On this chart, you see a red dashed line, that's a PE of 20, a blue line, which is a PE of 15, and a green line, which is a PE of 10, and the black line is a comparison of where the S&P 500 is now in relation to the trailing 12 months earnings. When we're above this red line, as depicted down below, that means that the market is overvalued on a trailing 12 month basis. Another chart that can be kind of interesting to look at are different events that happened in history and how the market reacted and what the valuations were at that particular time. Another measurement is called the Schiller P.E. ratio, and this is also suggesting that stocks are quite overvalued where we have a current P.E. of 28.05. The median and the mean are between about 16 and 17, so we're very overvalued in this regard. But the market doesn't use that. They look forward. And so we also keep track of forward P.E. ratios. If you base that on the close as of March 10th, we're now giving a reading of 17.1. So we're in between that 15 and 20 level. So we're a little bit over fairly valued. Now, some folks don't really like using forward P.E. ratios because they're fantasy or their projections, their forecasts that are always susceptible to change where the backwards looking numbers are more concrete and give us more of a realistic look at the stock market itself because forward looking PE ratios tend to be very overly optimistic. Nonetheless, it's what the market uses and so we wanna keep track of them. Looking at growth versus value, growth is when we wanna buy low and sell high. So first of all, we look at the growth index which shows that we're still in an overall downtrend we compare that with the value index showing that value is still in an uptrend even though it really had a difficult week this past week. We do some ratios between growth and value where on the top you see the ratio showing that growth is underperforming value on the bottom where value is outperforming growth. We also look at this by looking at some growth and value indexes showing that the growth is underperforming although it is bouncing back up recently. This is an inverse of that same chart showing how value is outperforming but seeing some recent weakness. Another look is at ETFs showing that growth is really underperforming value and that value is outperforming growth. Then the last one we look at is the growth index versus the value index showing how growth continues to underperform but is showing some recent improvement. Looking at some other markets, this is the 30 biggest software companies in the US and we just had a recent golden cross here, even though we're seeing some weakness. And that's what you'll see a lot on the daily charts right now. We have a lot of golden crosses that are happening, but right after that happened, or as we were going into that happening, the market itself has been really under some pressure. Another thing we look at is a CRB index on top. This is a monthly chart showing how it had really been going up through 2020 and 2021. In 2022, it started to come back down. We look at the bottom to get a ratio between inflation and deflation, showing that we're below this moving average, so there's not really inflationary pressures in the CRB currently. Now this goes in the face of some other reports that we're seeing, so we just look at all of them to come up with our own conclusion. Another one that we look at is the Baltic Dry Index, which is still in an overall downtrend, but it has been really bouncing back as of late. And this is what does it cost to ship products from one place to another. Here's the CRB index, which had been in a really strong uptrend. Well, now it had a recent death cross and is now in a downtrend. It's pretty much been chopping sideways. Corn, after spiking up, has been coming back down. Here's aluminum, really spiked up, fell back below, and is kind of bouncing back up a little bit lately. Heating oil, after going really high, has been coming back down. Gas, spiking up, coming down, but starting to go back up slightly. Natural gas, after topping out at 10, came all the way down to about 2. Currently, it's at 2.43. Oil has been between 75 and 80 lately. It's currently at 76.68. Diesel, we want to keep an eye on this. After really spiking up, it has been coming down. Wheat also spiked up and has been coming down. 
Fertilizer, after spiking up, it also has been coming down. Lumber, which was in a really strong downtrend throughout 2022, started to bounce back in early 2023, saw some weakness, and now it's pretty much chopping sideways. The dollar, after being really strong in 2022, really started to fall, gave us a death cross, and has been going sideways for the most part, but we have seen a little bit of a bounce lately. The euro is in an uptrend when compared to the dollar, and the Japanese yen is also in an uptrend overall. The British pound continues to be in an uptrend, although we saw a golden cross and some weakness in the British pound. Here's the Japanese yen, also a recent golden cross. Copper giving us a recent golden cross and has been hanging out around four. And we use this as a barometer of the economy. When copper is going up, generally that portends well to the economic future. When copper is going down, just the inverse of that is also true. The copper to gold ratio shows that copper has been really underperforming gold as of late, but it's still in an overall uptrend. And here's a longer term look at that same chart comparing the copper to gold ratio with the two year yield. Yields have been going up. This ratio has been underperforming in a way. There's a real wide spread between these two where they tend to go in the same overall direction and they tend not to get very far apart from each other even though they're on different scales. Gold had a recent golden cross falling back and is now seeing some more strength. Later in the week when the market hit some really difficult times, gold saw a real influx of buyers. And the same thing is true with silver. Recent golden cross, weakness, but seeing a bit of a bounce back. Looking at some indexes, we have the CRB underperforming the S&P 500, and the S&P 500 is outperforming the CRB index. The NASDAQ 100 continues to underperform the S&P 500. NASDAQ 100 is growth, where S&P 500 is growth and value. It has been bouncing up, but we're still in an overall downtrend, and we're still far away from getting a golden cross soon. Looking at some other stocks, here's the mega cap growth. These are the big companies, the Microsoft, Apple, Google, giving us close to a golden cross, but not quite there yet. The mega cap growth, comparing this to the S&P 500 equal weight ratio, shows that the big boys have really been starting to improve, but we're still in an overall downtrend. The S&P 100 is continuing to underperform the S&P 500, but making a comeback. What we're seeing as the market's hitting a difficult time is the big companies are doing better than the smaller companies. Small caps are really taking it on the chin these days, as are mid caps that I'll show you, but we're still in an overall uptrend when we look at this ratio to the S&P 500. Low volatility stocks, after giving us a golden cross, have been showing some weakness. The ratio between low volatility stocks and the S&P, we have been seeing some weakness here and we're just getting ready for a death cross. The Dow Jones Composite continues to be in an uptrend overall. We just had a recent Golden Cross, but then also some weakness. Looking at Dow Theory, where the Dow's really been under pressure as the transports later in the week, but utilities have been falling a lot more. Now, traditional Dow Theory, you don't use utilities. You just look at Dow and the transports. But I like to include utilities in this mix just to get an overall view. This is another way of looking at Dow Theory where you have the S&P on the top and it's been under some pressure and then use the NASDAQ for the comparison index down below and it has been showing some weakness as well. The FANG stocks gave us a recent golden cross and have been chopping sideways more or less. ARC is still in an overall downtrend, tried to bounce back up, got about up to the 45 level and is since retreating down to 3602. The high beta stocks, which tend to outperform the market either to the upside or the downside, as the market's been going down, we've been seeing more of a risk-off type of scenario as the market starts to get out of stocks and get into bonds. This looks at the S&P 500 and compares it to world stocks that are in Europe, Australia, Asia, and the Far East. We're still in an overall uptrend, even though we're starting to break below this moving average. We're also looking at this PPO on the bottom, if things were getting stronger, we would see this turning up, and it's still declining. So this is turning more negative. Looking at bonds and stocks, the bond ETF is still in an overall uptrend, even though it gave us a golden cross, fell back. It's starting to bounce back as of late. The world bond index also, recent golden cross, and then a lot of weakness, but it's trying to make a comeback. The stock to bond ratio, stocks are still in an overall uptrend when compared to bonds, but we are seeing some weakness in stocks. Shorter maturities, we're looking way over here on the right side, and it's a little hard to see, but we're seeing a little bit of a spike up with the bond to stock ratio. 
looking at high yield corporate bonds, recent Golden Cross, then some weakness, trying to stabilize. And investment grade bonds, recent Golden Cross, weakness, trying to stabilize and make a comeback. The stock to bond correlation shows that stocks and bonds are now having a tendency to go in opposite directions. That's as people get out of stocks and get into bonds. What would be more healthy for the stock market longer term is if stocks and bonds go in the same direction. As bonds are going up, that pushes interest rates down, which could give some support to the stock market. Corporate bonds still in an overall uptrend, but have been pretty much treading sideways since the Golden Cross. Here's the 10-year Treasury yield at 3695 Another look at the yield, show how it really came down on Thursday and Friday this past week. Here's another look at the 10-year yield, how it really dropped down below 3.7%. The 30-year yield is also at 3.7%. And the S&P 500 continues to underperform the rise in interest rates, but we're turning back up slightly. Junk bonds after a recent golden cross and then weakness trying to stabilize. Junk bonds continue to outperform government bonds, which is as it should be because they have higher yields. These are riskier bonds that people get into to get a better return. They're not as safe as government bonds, so you have to mix and match risk versus reward goals. This is looking at bond prices, how they had been dropping and now they're starting to go back up. And here's our yield curve showing that all of these different yield curves remain inverted. What we're watching for now is to see when they stop being inverted, then that typically is the end of this period. And then we start looking to see if a recession will ensue. Here's a daily chart showing how yields have been going up. And then in Thursday and Friday session, they really fell down. Here's a weekly chart showing how the U.S., the U.K., and German rates have been going up. Although in the U.S., they have fallen down a bit. And then Japan, they still have rates pretty low, but they have their own scenario that I'm keeping an eye on for right now. Looking at the S&P compared to other sectors, S&P to the utilities ratio it had been starting to spike up and is now coming back down. This tends to give a lot of support to the S&P when it's outperforming utilities, and it's just not doing that currently. The staple sector, recent Golden Cross, and then some weakness. Energy against the S&P 500 still is doing good overall. It came down to this moving average, and it may find support in this ratio. The tech sector just giving us a recent golden cross and has been chopping sideways. Semiconductors, recent golden cross, chopping sideways. The tech sector, the S&P, we're getting really close to a golden cross here. We're not quite there yet as the tech sector is starting to outperform the S&P 500. That could be really good for leadership. Tech doesn't always have to be in the lead, but if it's going higher and it's strong, that's growth, and that could really help the S&P to go higher. Looking at the S&P 500 and comparing it to discretionary ratio, the S&P is still in an uptrend compared to discretionary. Down below, we're seeing a recent golden cross, but then a lot of weakness with the discretionary to S&P ratio. The energy sector is still in an overall uptrend compared to the S&P. Materials in an uptrend. Financials really got hit here. They're still in an uptrend, but with the news coming out about some bank problems in Silicon Valley, and then potentially what's going to come next, the market is really gun-shy right now. Real estate is in an overall downtrend when compared to the S&P and continuing to fall. And utilities just gave us a recent death cross and are showing some weakness. Healthcare, getting close to a death cross. It had been really doing well. This is a value play, but showing a lot of recent weakness. And here's another look at the healthcare S&P ratio. We already have a death cross here. We don't see one on the other chart yet, but as healthcare has been really underperforming. Communication is starting to look a little bit better, but still in an overall downtrend. And staples also looking at what could be a cross here as they continue to come back and outperform the S&P. Industrials also in an uptrend compared to the S&P. The NASDAQ is underperforming the S&P 500, but really making a pretty strong comeback in 2023. The NASDAQ 100 is really outperforming the NASDAQ. And NASDAQ 100, that's growth. Where NASDAQ itself is growth, but the 100 has more mature companies. Looking at some other areas, growth against bonds, where growth had been really starting to break out, but now it's falling back as bonds have been enjoying some success. And looking at the 10-year yield rising, it's still in an uptrend when you compare it to tech. And then tech is underperforming the rise in interest rates. Comparing discretionary, the things that make life fun with staples, the things that you have to have. Discretionary continues to underperform 
Even though it's been improving quite a bit, it's since been falling back. And then the inverse of that same chart is showing how staples are outperforming discretionary. Looking at the energy sector, which has really been outperforming the tech sector, gold continues to be outperforming the S&P 500. And gold is also outperforming the dollar. It came back up and it was really looking strong, fell back, and now it's starting to go back up. Looking at high leverage loans, again, I say this every time in the video. If the economy was getting ready to fall off a cliff, do you think these would be breaking out after giving us a recent golden cross? No, they probably would not because these are risky loans. And if they were in danger of default, these stocks that make up this ETF would not be going up. So that's one thing that goes against this recessionary scenario that the market is putting forth. Then comparing shorter term maturities with investment grade bonds. When this is going up, that means fear is increasing. So we use this like we do the VIX. When you see a blue line and it's going down, that means fear is decreasing. We've been chopping around quite a bit lately. Looking at our intermarket analysis chart shows how oil, going back to the beginning of 2022, is still the best performer, followed by the dollar. Gold has now gone back positive, where stocks and bonds continue to be negative. Looking at some different indexes, this is the Amex, the NASDAQ, and the NYSE, taking a five-period moving average of their highs minus the lows. This is interesting because we're dropping below zero, so that's more negative. When we really pay attention to this chart is when we get an extreme negative reading, and we're far away from that currently. The small cap index, recent golden cross, shooting up nicely, now falling back down. Here's another look at the Russell, recent golden cross, came all the way up and hit this resistance level, and then broke down through support, and it's just been getting hammered lately. On the top, we have the RSI getting extreme negative, and on the bottom, we have a MACD that is still in a downtrend and dropping below zero. Looking at the ratio between small caps and the S&P 500, the red line is really going down. That means that small caps are really suffering as of late. And looking on a shorter term basis, based on our elder impulse system, we are in a downtrend because we have red bars for small caps. Mid caps, recent golden cross, shot up nicely. Now a lot of weakness. So we are in a shorter term downtrend with red bars. The Dow, recent golden cross, been chopping sideways, has now fell down below its 200 day moving average. And it's also falling below recent support. The diamonds are negative. The NASDAQ getting close to a golden cross, but not there yet, but showing some weakness. So far, this support level has held. Can it continue to do so? And the NASDAQ 100 also getting close to a golden cross. We still have S1 down below current prices. The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 have really been holding up a little better in the past couple of days as the market's really been taking a tumble. However, the Qs remain in a downtrend. And then here's a look at different advanced decline lines. This is the S&P, and I look at this every day, and it's dropping below this moving average, and that's negative. This is the mid-cap advanced decline line, also turning negative, as is the small cap advanced decline line. The NYC composite, recent golden cross, and now falling back. Wilshire, recent golden cross, falling back. All stocks, recent golden cross, falling back. Merging markets, recent golden cross, falling back. Sound like a broken record. Internationally, China's still in a downtrend with emerging markets. Europe trying to turn up slightly. Japan is still in a downtrend, and the U.S. is still in a downtrend using the KST oscillator. Bitcoin, we're seeing a golden cross here. Not necessarily anything to brag about. It's just if you give it long enough time, and if you go sideways, eventually the shorter-term moving average will catch up to the longer-term moving average, and that may be what we're seeing here. There's a lot of technical tools that you could apply to this chart, and there's all kinds of very familiar chart formations here from head and shoulder tops to inside head and shoulder tops. But this is the only thing that I look at on a daily basis. Looking at some correlations, the dollar and the S&P 500 are pretty much neutral in their relationship. Oil is still having a strong tendency to go in the same direction as the S&P, as is the 10-year yield and the S&P 500. They're having a pretty strong correlation. Not quite as strong is the tech sector to the rise in interest rates. And we're also seeing a strong correlation between the S&P 500 and the rise in the two-year yield. Home builders, keeping an eye on this. This potentially could be positive. Looking at the top, where the S&P has been declining, the home builders ETF has been declining, but the ratio is holding up fairly well. 
That means that the home builders are not doing as bad as the S&P, and that could give some support to the S&P. We're seeing that relationship really drop off. If we get to this extreme reading, and if we can still conclude that that could be positive for the market, that may give some support to the S&P 500. Looking at some really long-term charts, here's the NYSE composite, a monthly chart. We're starting to drop below the moving average here. We're trying to turn up with the copy curve, but it is still going sideways. The NYC composite on the top and the NYSC record high index, after turning back up, it's not really giving a lot of support to stocks, but this is a very long-term chart. And then the S&P on the top is dropping below the moving average. The PPO, we were trying to get back above it, but now we're starting to fall back. Looking at the S&P and a ratio to the CRB index, where the S&P is starting to outperform the CRB index, but if we see more weakness in stocks, this chart may not look as positive in the future. And then looking at the S&P 500 and taking a ratio of looking at global stocks, the S&P is still doing well. It's still above this moving average here, but our KST continues to decline down below. So this is giving us a mixed picture. And then a monthly chart of the S&P, and then on the bottom is a ratio between the CRB and bonds, where the CRB has been starting to really underperform. This is an inverse of that same chart showing how the bonds are starting to outperform the CRB index. And then we have the monthly look at the CRB index where it's starting to show some weakness and it's also starting to underperform bonds. And then this is another ratio looking at bonds to the CRB index where bonds are starting to outperform. And then here's an intermediate term and short term look at the ratio between bonds and the CRB index. Still declining in the short term, but still positive in the intermediate term. Updating some of our possible positive scenarios. We're seeing growth holding up fairly well. The Qs are doing better than the S&P, so this ratio is going up. But when you compare discretionary to the S&P, that's going down. When you compare large cap growth to large cap value, that is still doing well. And then we look at some other growth to value ratios. Large caps doing well above the moving average. Mid caps and small caps are performing much better. So this could potentially be some positive things developing under the surface. And if we hit a pretty extreme oversold condition and bounce up out of that, that could be significant for bouncing up. Looking at the number of stocks that are above their 50-day moving average in the S&P, I should have updated this. It is really declining currently, but it's not giving us an extreme negative reading. Looking at the mid caps also, seeing a deterioration, and the small caps are also falling. We pay most attention to this when we drop down below this red line. Looking at the 50-period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows, we're still in this positive area, but we're rolling over. And here's another look at that same chart. The black line is the actual indicator. The red line is the moving average that you saw in the previous chart. And we're starting to drop below zero. And that is negative. But it hasn't caused the moving average to drop below zero at least yet. Looking at the two-year treasury yield, which sometimes gives us support, when the two-year yield has spiked and then starts coming down, that oftentimes helps the S&P 500. We're just wondering now, has a new spike emerged? Then looking at our staples to S&P 500 ratio, we're still working off of this spike here. Didn't really give a lot of support to stocks, and now this ratio is starting to come back up slightly. So we'll keep an eye on this. So what is positive right now? There's some changes. The value indexes and ETFs remain positive. The dynamic software index, that's a new addition. The euro, the Japanese yen, and the British pound when you compare them to the dollar. Copper, gold and silver, low volatility stocks, the Dow Jones Composite Average, the FANG Index is another new addition. Looking at multitude of different bonds with the ETF, the high yield bonds, the investment grade bonds, the world bonds, corporate bonds as well as junk bonds are all positive. Staples continue to be positive. Tech, a new addition, and semiconductors. High leverage loans, small caps, mid caps, and the Dow, even though we're seeing some recent weakness. The NYSE Composite and Wilshire, also some recent weakness. All stocks, emerging markets, and then we have the new addition, the Bitcoin Index. What's negative? Growth continues to be negative. The CRB Index, the dollar, mega cap stocks, the really big ones, ARK, the NASDAQ, and NASDAQ 100. Thank you. I hope you found this useful. Please feel free to check out the daily video update, the weekly video update, I will be preparing the deep dive video and the supplemental video before the market opens for Monday's trading.